Oggi proveremo un gommone molto grande, 12 metri e 70 Today we will try a very large dinghy, 12 meters and 75 centimeters in length. As usual, we will look at its style, its habitability, its comfort, but above all, we will navigate with it, because this hull and this motorization deserve our attention. It's called Salper Soleil 42, and at the moment, it's the flagship of a fleet of six models, designed and built in the last three years. But the construction site is not so new. It's from 1984 that it produces pleasure boats up to 16 meters. It is the company of the Payne family, made up of engineers who take great care of their projects. To better understand this product, I think it is important to illustrate its genesis. They started with the drawing of the hull, then they moved onto the structures. So they returned to work on the hull shapes. Then they designed the layout of the interior of the deck. They chose the position of the tubulars, and once again they asked the intervention of the hull designer, Adam Younger, in order to find those ideal lines of water for the shapes and the weight that the raft took on during the design phase, and therefore find a perfect harmony of the entire construction. The bridge stands out for the two original armchairs facing the bow. The pilot seats are ergonomic, enveloping and safe. The kitchen is complete. The cockpit is transformed from a living room to a dining area to a sun deck. There is also a seat facing stern on the bathing platform. Below deck, they were able to create a large room, minimizing the space between the inner molding, the sides and the hull. On boats of this size, centimeters count. At the bow, there is a double berth with an interesting solution where you can transform the sofa into a bed. The bathroom has a separate shower. Under the cockpit, another berth for two people. The countersinks, where the windows are inserted, help to increase the space next to the bunk. At the stern we have two Yamaha 425 horsepower engines, but if you want you can also install three 450 horsepower outputs for a total power of 1,350 horsepower. Too many? From a structural point of view it would not seem so. I noticed that they connected the keel board to the mirror with an enormous lightning bolt. It's rather unusual to have such a reinforced structure. We have a swell sea with rather high waves here in front of Genoa. But this hull has also been studied for difficult conditions. At the bow, it is very sharp. At the stern, the dead rise is 18 degrees, and the middle one along the central section is about 30 degrees. In short, it should not fear the rough sea. The tubulars rest on the surface and thus gives us more stability and security. They had to study special bonding because of the air chambers on such a large, heavy and fast hull are under considerable pressure. It navigates so well that I didn't realize I was going so fast, but I want to start analyzing data from lower speeds, from the surf. I watch the trail and check when the hull begins to sustain itself. It enters trim at 12 knots without raising the bow. The fact that the angle of incidence does not change 
but that the gliding entrance is slipping on the water is optimal for the rider, who does not have to make adjustments with trim and flaps, but also for the passengers. As the speeds increase and the travel angle remains unchanged, apart from the pitching due to the waves. These two giants of 5.6 litres each push us to 20 knots at 3,400 rpm. Overall, consumption is just over 80 litres per hour. I give it some more gas. I'm at 3,800 rpm, 100 litres per hour of consumption, but we are sailing at 30 knots. They wanted to complicate things by drawing a hole with two steps. Now we know that when you give origin to these geometries, you need to be very careful. Because yes, they are advantageous, but they may not even work. So let's check it out. Here they begin to go into action. You can sense their effectiveness. We are between 36 and 40 knots, around 4,500, 4,800 RPM. With the steps, points of greater pressure are created in the front of the bottom ones, which give us more sustenance and therefore raise the hull. And this reduces resistance. Then there is the ventilation. That is the entry of air into the sections aft of these steps, which reduces the resistance caused by the water. And that's why you can go so fast. The steps also simplify the conduction of the boat because the adjustments made on the trim are less important. However, I like to give it the trim. This way I can try a sportier ride of the race trim of the hull, and the result is felt, seen and measured. We're at 5,500 RPM, 47 knots. Even with these waters and these waves, look at its stability, how the angle of incidence remains constant. I also found a better adjustment. We're at 50 knots. And now down the throttle and up the trim. It's wonderful to sail this way. 6,100 RPM. Maximum speed, 53 knots. It's unbelievable in these conditions. But now there is one last test that I want to take. Because when you go into a turn, the steps can work as a brake. They can cause sudden decelerations and therefore a less easy control of the boat. In this case, it is not so, but there is a secret. They have designed these steps with a variable geometry, wider towards the keel axis and narrower and less high at the edge exit. Salpa has recently started to build inflatable boats, and this model is brand new. However, they have a very long experience and they design very carefully. And these are the results.